Let the region E be bounded by the cone z equals the square root of the product of six and the sum of x squared and y squared and the hemisphere z equals the square root of the quantity 100 minus x squared minus y squared. Determine the volume of E. The three dimensional graph is shown below. The region E is the volume inside the cone capped off by the hemisphere, which is this region here. Recall we can determine volume using triple integrals. The volume V of the solid E is equal to the triple integral over the solid region E, one dV. In this case, though, we'll be using spherical coordinates. When using spherical coordinates, recall that dV is equal to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. It's often helpful to also determine the x, y, and y, z traces when converting from rectangular to spherical coordinates to help determine the limits of integration. I've already provided the x, z trace and y, z trace here on the right. To determine the x, z trace, we set y equal to zero in both equations. For the first equation, when y is zero, we have z equals the square root of six x squared, which simplifies to z equals plus or minus square root six x. This gives us the v in the x, z trace. Notice the right segment is given by the equation z equals square root six x, and the segment has a slope of positive square root six. The equation of the left part is z equals negative square root six x, where the slope is negative square root six. And then for the second equation, when y is zero, we have z equals the square root of the quantity 100 minus x squared, which gives us the hemisphere with a radius of 10. And now set up the triple integral to determine the volume. The volume of E is equal to the triple integral of rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And that's where we're going to determine the limits of integration for rho, phi, and theta. For a quick review, when using spherical coordinates, rho is the distance between the point and the origin. Theta is the angle counterclockwise from the pole or positive x-axis in the xy plane. And phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the point, all of which are illustrated here on the right. Going back to our work, we begin by determining the limits integration for rho. Looking at the xz trace, rho starts at zero and goes out to the hemisphere in which it radius is 10. The limits of integration for rho are from zero to 10. Next, we determine the limits of integration for phi, which is the angle from the positive z-axis, this angle here. The lower limit of phi is zero. To determine the upper limit of phi, we'll have to use some right triangle trigonometry. Let's go to another slide. If this is the angle phi, notice if we sketch a horizontal segment, we form a right triangle, which we can then use to express the angle phi. If we enlarge this rectangle, and let it be a representative rectangle, because the slope of this segment is square root six, or square root six over one, the vertical length would be square root six, the horizontal length would be positive one. Notice one is the opposite side in relation to phi, and square root six is the adjacent side, which means tangent phi is equal to one divided by square root six, or phi equals arctangent of one divided by square root six. This is the upper limit of integration for phi. Also notice we can find the length of the hypotenuse, which is square root seven, using the Pythagorean theorem. And we will need this later. So going back to our triple integral, we now know the upper limit of integration for phi is arctan of one divided by square root six. And now we determine the limits of integration for theta. I didn't include the xy trace here, but if we look at the xy plane in three dimensions, theta starts at zero and goes all the way around the circle, the limits of integration for theta are from zero to two pi. And now we begin integrating with respect to rho, which gives us rho cubed divided by three times sine phi or one third rho cubed sine phi. And now we determine big F of 10 minus big F of zero by performing substitution for rho. When rho is 10, we have one third times 1000 sine phi. And when rho is zero, we have zero. Which simplifies to 1000 divided by three sine phi. And now we integrate with respect to phi. 
the integral of 1,000 divided by 3 sine phi is equal to 1,000 divided by 3 times negative cosine phi, or negative 1,000 divided by 3 cosine phi. Let's continue on the next slide. When phi is arctan of 1 divided by the square root of 6, we have negative 1,000 divided by 3 cosine of arctan of 1 divided by the square root of 6, and then minus, when phi is 0, we have negative 1,000 divided by 3 cosine 0. And now we need to simplify cosine of arctan of 1 divided by the square root of 6. Remember, arctan of 1 divided by the square root of 6 is the angle phi that has a tangent function value of 1 divided by the square root of 6. We want the cosine of phi. So going back to that right triangle, notice cosine phi is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is square root 6 divided by square root 7, or if we want the square root of 6 sevenths. Simplifying, we have negative 1,000 divided by 3 times the square root of 6 sevenths, and then minus cosine 0 is equal to 1. Simplifying, we have plus 1,000 divided by 3. And notice the entire integrand function is a constant. So let's go ahead and write this as 1,000 divided by 3 minus 1,000 square root 6 divided by 3 square root 7 all times integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 d theta. Integrating 1 with respect to theta just gives theta. Big F of 2 pi minus big F of 0 simplifies to just 2 pi, which gives us 2 pi times 1,000 divided by 3 minus 1,000 square root 6 divided by 3 square root 7. Let's go ahead and factor this. Let's factor out 1,000 thirds, which gives us 2,000 pi divided by 3 times the quantity 1 minus the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 7. Because this is volume, this would be cubic units. The decimal approximation is 155.3620, which again is the volume of the cone capped off by the hemisphere. I hope you found this helpful.